in many ways, especially among adults, people don't, you know, St. Louisans don't always say, where'd you go to high school? They'll simply say, where'd you go to school, right? And if you're not a St. Louisan, someone asks you as an adult, where did you go to school? My first impulse is to respond where I went to college and or graduate school. That's a way in which I signal to people that I'm actually not from St. Louis. You can figure out everything from socioeconomic status to race, to ethnicity, um, to political leaning just by knowing where a person went to high school. And that's why it's such an important question for St. Louis. And so as long as, as spaces remain relatively segregated and distinct in terms of geography, then you know a lot about a person just by knowing where they went to high school. To the extent that people still live and understand and respect these kind of parochial lines, if you're interested in looking at the black middle class, you can find nice little pockets of the black middle class. If you're looking at, you know, poor white underemployed classes, you can find those communities and almost fi and find most of them in kind of segregated isolation. I think the goal for me isn't for everybody to, you know, live in a perfectly integrated neighborhood, but for everybody to have access to a way to get to and through neighborhoods and, and to and through communities that are not their own. The phrase redlining and the practice of redlining started here, and that was, you know, people would create maps and um, particular financial institutions and say, this is a neighborhood that's not worth investing in, so you put a red line around it. So you have things like housing covenants that, that help push segregation, and then when you have financial institutions that then decide not to, oh, this neighborhood is too black, so we're not gonna give loans here, or we're not gonna give, you know, housing improvement loans here you end up creating those structures. And those, I think, are the kinds of practices that turn streets and thoroughfares into divides. And so when you, when you move communities and that community gets displaced to places like Wellston and Robertson, which are outside of the city and in North County, and those are the kinds of processes that over the, the, the course of 50, 75, and 100 years, keep creating and recreating deeply segregated spaces. One of the ways for it has to be with us developing again, or maybe for the first time, a real capacity to have challenging conversations through our differences that don't require people to give up who they are and to be unable to tell their full stories. We have to, we have to be able to get to a position where people of really different identities and ideologies can actually talk and work together to create solutions um, that might not make everybody happy, but um, allow us to actually develop some kind of progress. I think we have to do that with a concentration on equity. I can't imagine that any of us want to sit in a position where we know that our outcomes are simply determined by some identity that was given to us before we were born, right? And especially if those outcomes are negative. You know, so I think um, we want to get to a place where a person's outcomes aren't determined because of the gender they were, the, the gender they identify with or the race they identify with. But that involves, I think, a level of honesty and a kind of patience that doesn't seem to be in supply these days.